Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Welcome to the newest, the greatest, the most spectacular show in entertainment history. about Peter Jackson. Mr. Jackson, the world's famous New Zealand director, known for producing The Adventures of Tintin, stabbing Simon Pegg, and directing the universally praised Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit film franchises. Not the latter, which I never bothered watching. <laughs> but we did watch his early movies. <laughs> In case you wanted to live under a rock or never bother to look up his work besides the key phrases Hobbit or Kong, Jackson, before his ring years, been directing B-movie quality flicks during the late 80s through the early 90s, which I call his Sam Raimi phase, where he directed cult classics like Bad Taste, Brain Dead, and the movie we're going to enjoy this evening, Meet the Feebles, a movie where I can easily picture Jackson snoring coke, getting hammered at a party, and... Then get sober, snort coke, and instead of getting hammered, he hammered out some ideas and says... Hey, let's make the film like the Muppets, all with more uses of drug, sex, and violence. And then you get Meet the Feebles. Oh boy, this is gonna be good! We're introduced to a wonderful music number featuring all the main players that will star in what I think will be a lovely film so far. We get introduced to the main star. Miss Piggy? You let yourself go! Even more so. So, after that wonderful little opening number, we... Alright, you fat slag, move your ass! How dare you speak to me like that, you horribly spiteful little rat! I've heard better singing from a mongoose with throat cancer. I won't stand for this treatment any longer! Get to see Peter Laurie as a rat. Shocking, I know, right? Who is causing some crap with size 5X Miss Piggy over there? Huh. Saying ass in a family film. Gee, I wonder. So then we get to see Heidi Mill with Blitch as the Ah! Oh, 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 um, yeah, okay. Oh shit! I was just about to pop my cookies! Uh did I just see a walrus screwing a cat? Yes, you've seen a walrus fucking a cat. Oh boy, this is gonna be good! So, one of our main characters, Heidi the Hippo, a top drawer singer hired by Mr. Bletch for his little feeble show on television, discuss about Trevor's insults towards her, and simply just want Bletch's love, not knowing about the affair the walrus is having. And from the looks of it, Bletch is just using her as nothing but draw alone, as she's been really letting herself go. Hard to tell since, really, because you know, hippo. That's just racist! So we're introduced to Robert the Hedgehog! Who is the new guy in this place? Well, he may not be way past cool, but he sure is way past cute. <laughs> Happy. 
New boy, are you? Looking for Arthur? Hey, ease of my peripherals, dumb muncher. Much better. So Arthur the Worm introduced Robert, or Wilbert, to all the gals in the cast where our spiky little Frank gained his first love interest. That's Lucille. She's just joined the chorus as well. You two should get together sometime. Is it true that love fools But he's not alone. As a particular dirty rat, has his eyes set on Miss Lucille as well. Tushy, I wouldn't mind giving her a book with the old pork sword. <laughs> How do I get around? All right! I'll bite. He's gonna pork that poodle, isn't he? Look, we just seen hippo tits, a blubber puss hubbing a pussy, two doses of nightmare fuels, and a lizard who seemed to be on a road to... By the way, how far are we in this movie? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's continue. I'll admit that this film ain't known for its slow pace. A far outcry from the future Jackson as wow. he'll be directing even longer films later. So after we see the fearsome walrus in his studio habitat, he feasts upon his latest upcoming talent for the show. I would say something about this horrible behavior. This is the most natural thing a walrus is supposed to do in this movie. Such a lovely creature. <laughs> Bludge and his comrades are out playing golf with one half of Bebop Rocksteady over there as a bit of obtain the director's inspiration for this movie so they can give our drugged out lizard friend his fix later. That's a lovely course. I'm tempted to join the club myself. No chance of that, I'm afraid, Cedric. You mean they discriminate against squads? So we just don't like assholes in the clubhouse. <laughs> Meanwhile, Robert confesses his love for Lucille with a beautiful song. Under the light of the Spanish moon, it is for love that I croon this tune. Lucille, Lucille, Lucille. And just like that, I've gone deaf. Terribly sorry. You must think I'm an idiot. I should never have done this. I promise you, I shan't ever bother you again. Bobby, wait! How did you know I love the men? Then on subplot number four, Sid the Elephant lost his furby like pets from the Donkey Kong hazard. He's suffering from the wrath of his chicken waifu as he claims that Sid is the father of their child. Oh God, Sandy! Why did you bring it here? It's not mine! We'll let the court decide that, shall we? You know what this calls for, fellas? Jerry! 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 Heidi walls in sorrow and cake as she flashes back at the time when she was younger and was the then new hip singer at the film noir club, where a young Bledge has an eye for talent and asks her to star in his then new feeble show. I hear they got some great swamps out that way. What's a cute young thing like you doing in the big smoke? I'm not so young. In two years, I'll be 18. Really? But you're so well developed. Mm -hmm. 18 in two years? What the fuck? Are you a producer? I aim to be. I aim to be the best goddamn producer this town has ever seen. I got the contacts. I got the capital. What I need is what you got. Cellulite. That was my second guess, Pops. After the flashback, we cut back to the golf game where Bletch won the game by blowing chunks. And then back in the studio, Woodbird hears a terrible noise and falls the source only to find... The 
when Nora is starting to have the shakes and botching up his knife throw, leading to a really nice friggin' bow. This causes him to tell a guilt trip story of his time in Vietnam to others. Experience and non result to his addiction in the first place, thus gave Webbert enough feels to give up his money to him. Harry, after making rabbits with a bunch of floozies, gained the big on AIDS. Most likely got AIDS. You don't have to be so subtle or clever about it, Moby. And hearing the bearer of bad news from Dr. Paul Lind the Duck that he only got one day to live made things worse since that gosh darn fly got the scoop of the entire situation. Okay, I'm back! What did I miss? Well, while you tuned out to all the wonderful little imagery, trust me, there's oh so much more of it. As things obviously keeps getting worse and worse. We've got a crisis on our hands. Winyard's killed his assistant. Our bees out of action. Sid's routine is a complete write-off. We've got no alternative but to reinstate my song. No! Which, I'm sorry, but the show is in a shambles. This is a family show, for Christ's sake. Family show? Heh, <laughs> that's cute. We get right back to the Earth subplot between Robert and Lucille as Trevor plans to have his way with her. Initiate date rape. I feel woozy. Here, then you're losing your clothes. Oh, that's beautiful. Right for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we here at the Stupid Movie Reviews don't condone sexual harassment or any other potential sexual acts. We need someone to tell you why all of this is no good. No, 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 not that guy. Too played out. Let's hear it out from this guy. sexual harassment to you and me. Sexual harassment. Panda, don't say that, don't touch there, don't be nasty, says the silly bear. He's gonna tell you what's right and wrong, sexual harassment, Panda. <laughs> you said it, sexual harassment, Panda. Now, back to our scheduled program. <laughs> oh man, Peter Jackson's got the puppet is way too screwed up. Robert, thank goodness, stop all this only to set himself up and to think Lucille is a two-timer. How could you do this? Robert, uh, Lucille, how could you? No, Robert, wait. Things can get all wacky than ever as Heidi musical number goes. <laughs> Pretty much like that, yeah! Heidi eventually caught Fletch getting some with Samantha, which I do have to question. Doesn't it hurt to get a rough BJ from a friggin' cat? Oh, that was so not bode well. During the drug deal between Fletch and Cedric, the guys test out their latest stuff. <laughs> what kind of cocaine was that? And can I have some? <laughs> no, it's really just Borax they been swindled with by Cedric. And out of anger, Fletch killed his own agent Louie and was ready to go out, but... I'm sorry. The show's off. What the hell are you talking about? Heidi is refusing to perform. The network won't proceed without her. They've cancelled the live transmission. What do you mean? Of course she's performing. I'm sorry, Blitch. She's locked herself in a room and won't talk to anyone. But the show cannot go on due to Heidi going through, well, a lot. Can't you tell so far? So Blitch regains her confidence with a simple pity fuck. I knew you'd come. Somebody call the network. The show will go on. Long live the Pity Bunch! 
So, Bletch and the gang all arrive at the docks to confront Cedric's Goonies, a giant spider, and... And holy name of Jim Henson is that? Looks like somebody been using their sesame roids. So finally, the big show begins as the whole event goes all pretty goody goody so far until. <laughs> nope, 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 I'm done, I'm done. Things reached their most horrible conclusion with Herman botching up on stage, sick and perform without his critters, and Bletch finally left Heidi after I've just lost her main bit of my heterosexuality, thus leaving her indefinitely. When I perform his knife trick again, only to again botch this up thanks to the post-traumatic Rambo syndrome, resulting to Ooh, what a nice boat! Yeah, I really like the structure. Ooh, and the craftsmanship. Meh, needs more iceberg. <laughs> Heidi after feeling suicidal about, well, what the f do you think? And was about to let all go until Samantha rolled right in. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Don't let me stop you. I think you'll find the safety catch is on. Oh, eat that, you man stealing slut! Aw, oh, shit. I just walked right into that one. Thanks for the advice. And this is the part of the movie where Heidi goes all Columbine on all of their candy asses. But first, this case of good news. Hi, Harry. I just received your test results. And guess what? I made a boo-boo. A boo-boo? Yeah, Harry. You're in the clear. You just got a bad case of bunny pox. I'll send you my bill. Now that the gag is done, let's begin the carnage. Let me tell you about Saul. Dominate. Double kill. Headshot. Killing spree. <laughs> Monster kill. Kill. Shoot at me! I didn't like any of that. Alright! Let's finish this! Heidi shot down everybody with only a few people that are good, like Robert, who helped Heidi defeat Trevor and Blanche, thus, he gets to be with Lucille! I don't care what you've done, Lucille. I love you so very, very much, and I want you to marry me. Oh, Robert! Oh, shit! Yay! And thus, Heidi ends off her rampage with a song. On a magic night, when the way you feel is a mystery, it will be revealed. Could be an angel from up above with a flower. So that was Peter Jackson.
Christians meet the Feebles, and boy, was it weird! You hit that nail right on the head, stupid. Despite the obvious facts how different this film is to his later films, it's a f***ed up a hilarious piece of entertainment as we're engaged into the crazy behind the scenes set of The Feeble Show. As things are not what they seem with all the drugs, sex, blackmail, and backstabbing that occurs here. As it feels like, to me, a satire of the dark side of show business. Speaking of satires, Jackson said in the interview that he wasn't really doing a parody of The Muppets. <coughs> Bullshit! as he was satirizing the dark side of human nature. And he sure as hell pulled that off in flying colors as it shows the cruelest kinds of people, um, puppets, you see in said show business. But there is a glimmer of hope in the form of Heidi, Wubbard, Lucille, Arthur, and Sid, as these are the most likable characters in the film as they experience the horror that goes on in this place, resulting the emotionally damaged Heidi raising all hell to the things she went through as we, the film goers, see her journey throughout the film that even you will go, oh hell yeah, once she takes out all the bad people in the show. Okay, not everyone is bad, but she was in a dark place, damn it. It's a fast-paced and entertainingly weird dark comedy film that I strongly suggest not to bring the kitties along. And as suggestive as comedy goes, if you can stomach and have a high tolerance to screwed up sense of humor compared to the more messed up cartoons on the internet, then this is a film for you. The film's quality in this movie is total ass, but compared to the other films like Slaughter High and Dracula vs. Frankenstein, it's seeable, I guess. Also, the puppet ranges from downright creepy to... <laughs> There's also way too many subplots in this movie, jumping in from this to that in a kind of haphazard flow into the story. Thank God all that shit is concluded near the end. The experience is rather unpleasant and everyone except for a few characters are a total a-hole. My kind of movie. <laughs> what is this I don't even- Everything's all scary and stuff! They got hippo boobies, drugs, and is that a fly in a dookie? This isn't the Muppets! What sweet hell is this? But I do think Robin was a Dora Blair and Heidi gets so much booty in the end! You go, girl! Well, I'm gonna go put a 20 gauge shotgun up to my face. No, but seriously, this movie was a walking nightmare. This is just a prime example that anyone can improve, especially Jackson. Like, give this a think through. This is the same man who later produced and directed the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The Lord of the freaking Rings! Other than that, I see no other good thing to say about this film. It's just so icky. Party. My kind of party indeed. Yeesh, Peter Jackson, what the crap? Yippee!